So, uh, I was lucky enough when I was a young lad to go to the Williamsburg area. Uh, my family did a lot of vacations, but they had to be educational. So, uh, Williamsburg, one of the first settlements in the U.S., um, very old town feel, and you can get really easily over to Yorktown um, and some of the other really, you know, early Revolutionary War era. The River Course at Kings Mill. It is home of the LPGA Pure Silk Championship. How did that round go? And this, yeah, started late. Not a good look. A little upset. So I yeah, this is, say I'm a little what, disappointed. What was our tee time? Two, three, five. First hole on the River Course after waiting 30 minutes. Pipe said, shot. One thirty-three. Maddie's got one thirty-three to the pin after a nice little three wood poked out here. He blades it, but it might be okay. It's gonna roll a long ways. He is over the green here. An underwhelming experience thus far at Kings Mill. Spirits were temporarily lifted with three good tee shots and some class around the first green. Hopes were high as we began our round at the newly ranked ninety-sixth best public course. First time around Golf Digest Top 100 list, the river course brought us another experience from a familiar architect on our golf trip so far, Pete Dye. While Pete is best known for the likes of Whistling Straits, the Ocean Course at Kauai, TPC Sawgrass, and French Lake, his full list of course designs is over 150. Of all his courses, those built in the 1970s received the least amount of publicity and found smack dab in the middle of that decade is the river course at Kingsville. Should be coming back. A little short left. Oh, caught the front edge. Good shot. He's just past you. Go, run. That's not, get over that, go. Oh baby. Look at that, like you, like you meant to do it. I tried to open the club face. That's a four too. Let her rip, buddy, four. Nope, good shot. Great putt. Opening in 1975, Pete Dyes was the first course at Kings Mill and remains the marquee course for the resort. The course has seen time on the PGA Tour hosting the Michelob Championship from 1981 to 2002. The LPGA took over in 2003 and still hosts the Pure Soap Championship annually. Playing the course from the LPGA tees, we have to fill up our cards with pars, bogeys, and worse, only to watch the Pure Soap champ, Wei Ling Shi, torch the course months later, shooting 13 under, and a low round of 65. Our seventh season on the LPGA Tour. Yeah! She persisted. And she is a winner for the first time on the LPGA Tour. With a rich history on a championship course, our expectations were high. Unfortunately, that's not the experience we had. 
It's not like it's a terrible course, but well, it's not memorable in my opinion. This is not a well-run establishment. I was, I was thinking the same thing. They let like an ASIM off of like guys that just decided to replay. And I don't yes. know. Yes. They did a replay. No. They talked to the guy about it. And, and they just like, well, we replay. just like, yeah, sorry. They were just trying to get out before you all. And then that's why we didn't finish the round. Yep. We, oh, had we did play. finish it. We just played it. We in, put, 18 was in the dark. 18, I, picked I didn't up. even find my ball. I, as soon as I hit it, I couldn't see the ball. Yeah. So, and we yeah. definitely didn't find it. All right, I'm getting it. I have picked up for bogey. I think I don't know where my ball's at now, so. We were off our tee time, what, 30, 40 minutes late because yeah. of that? Yeah, so that's- Ryan for his birdie in the dark. Walking it in. Not, not a, a good... great way to start the experience when you're you're playing an LPGA course. Just, yeah, yeah. But, oh, yeah. just kidding. Well, I've played a few LPGA courses. You know, I think it's my least favorite I've ever played. He makes it for his par, Matt. <laughs> just stubs it. See, guys. Just it's stubs it. Oh, it's, it's a light. <laughs> is this not downhill? It's downhill. Mash it. Oh yeah, look at that in the pole. in the cut. Ooh! I, I I was really disappointed with our trip at that point. Like company was good, but from a golf perspective, like yeah, yeah we were. I was not as spiritual. Well. Yeah, because spiritual, we were like, yeah. wow, we came all the way out here thinking we were playing LPJ course, we were having a great time. Team right. Team. And then it was just like, what are we doing? But we were just kind of burnt out grass. Golden horseshoe, baby. And then we, we haven't even talked about how we didn't have a tea time for that. Well, we're not gonna. We're gonna get there. We're talking about the river right now. Do you not remember that? Oh, I do remember. We're talking that. about you the river right now. Yeah, Sir, I can cut. But you don't understand. Time Ryan, doesn't exist in this. Okay. <laughs> Just let it come naturally. But quit worrying. <laughs> the river course gets its namesake from the closing three hole stretch it is best known for. The stretch begins with hole 16 running down towards the James River, then slightly back up to an elevated par 3 17th overlooking the bluffs. Wrapping back around, golfers find themselves on the 18th tee overlooking a scenic tee shot over an inlet pond. The heavily bunkered hole in green make for a challenging finish to Pete Dye's championship design. Holes down into the bunker. Matt, go ahead. Nice, got to curl back. And then we checked out uh, historical Williamsburg to see the old timey stuff. God. Well, you're in a very rough spot there. It was a kind of a crappy day. I mean, yeah, it was rainy, well, so we were diving in the raindrops. But I don't know. I always get kind of disinterested in some of that stuff because I feel like I'm just walking around looking at things. Well, we could have yeah, done more, I think. I, I, mean, I need to be engaged. <laughs> there's not, there's yeah. not enough stimulation. But as somebody that's been there before, I mean, we can do more things. You can go see uh, the horses. And <laughs> we did see the horses. Yeah, we did see the horses. And uh, great food. And it's, it's just a cool place. I think underrated as far as golf is. I think if you go in the peak season, can you can get some really good uh, good days out there. Wouldn't know. <laughs> we would not know that, but good par. Oh yeah, curl. Can we talk about the carts. The carts, how comfortable they were. It was like, oh yeah. I mean, these things. <laughs> I, I've never sat in a more comfortable golf cart. Yeah. I mean, this <laughs> thing was like the most cushiony, like lazy boy chair you could ever have, just plopped in a cart. 
Jesus. It's a good putt. Matt has now made five consecutive putts left-handed. Ryan just did one too. And just like you said. And it has a shot. It's got a turn. Yeah, it is. You hit it well. Nope. Nice ball, Joey. I thought I was going to get a whole one on camera, so I switched, Ryan. I, I thought this, this was going right here, and it died. I thought this girl behind us just hit a hole in one. It was right at the pin. So we missed Ryan's swing there. Oh, how powerful it was. Where'd you go? <clears throat> Show me how to hit a bunker shot, because I don't know how. And he does. Well, Tell me about your hat. It's uh, from my favorite barbecue spot in the world, actually. I think so. I don't really think I've had better barbecue. I mean, I haven't really been to Nashville once, but I don't think we went to a barbecue spot. But yeah, check it out if you ever go to Austin, Texas. Okay. Um, Williamsburg, so, not known for its barbecue, so but it's known it for its is. seafood. Is it? So. R.I.P. Houses. Right at this one. Yep. What I'm trying to think of, I tried clams for the first time, or oysters, oysters for the first time. Yeah. Five out of ten. <laughs> I think I can learn to love them, but I mean, it's really just a salty booger. <laughs> we're being honest. I mean, people like them are. Or what? Sus. Okay. <laughs> the resident uh, seafood expert, I have to strongly disagree. You got into that? This, uh, why, did we have seafood? Why did we get into you? We got into you and your seafood place. I forget the name of it. Ryan's and Matt's crab crab leg steamboats have arrived. The men of the group have indulged in their crab and corn. Virginia cooking at its finest. Houses, gorgeous houses. Here's the water. Wow. And what's some other houses we're looking in? These holes are worth it, I guess. That's a nice house. Ryan, for the par save, it curls down. It curls. Oh, ooh. Yeah. Overall, river course, you know, it was. I, I can't defend the price tag for that late in the season. I think that's my biggest takeaway. It was and the experience with just getting teed off was like that was just poor management. It's just a couple uh, bad things. It's, yeah. It, for a private Sour course, taste. it's not rent. It's that's a, the other thing too. Like it's, it's private. allegedly a private course, so you have to have a membership to get on. And... Or you do the timeshare. Right, like thing. a resort style thing, but still, like you expect better from that. Like I actually remember commenting, I would never I have no pay idea as a member for a course that. It's like that. Yeah. Uh, the course was not in good shape. They didn't yeah. really lower their rate, and I think that frustrated me a lot. We started late. Um, it was a slow day, and I think that course could be really nice in, in peak season. I'd love to go try it again. Um, burnt out Bermuda just is not for me. But it's also that, like, even if conditioning is perfect, it's not that good of a course, right? The, the layout was a little... Like, what holes do you remember? Fun. It's just not a memorable course. Like, yeah, it's a cool course. It might be like a cool PGA course or LPGA course, but it's just not, it's not something that you travel to go play. It's like, if you're there, why not? Um, and then still, it was kind of let down.
So the, the third course is the gold the gold course at oh. the Golden Horseshoe. You'll see me in a very very tight, tight Tiger Woods outfit. <laughs> This is your favorite this course that you've ever played. Yeah, I'm, I agree with Joey. Yeah. You said the name. I don't know if you remember this, but it was uh, the one key shot where you drive out from the tunnel and it says stop, balls, balls coming. Nice. Yeah, that was the hole where he yelled at me, so he clearly <laughs> thinks it's been building up. Uh, <laughs> well, this is the hole where I also dropped my cooler That is when you dropped the cooler. We were, full, we were flustered. Well, this is the hole that the snap hook came out. I almost killed those two guys that were coming out right. They were like, "Oh, don't worry, we played enough." And I was like, "Honestly, I don't. I didn't think that shot was possible to do that, and I did it. But that snap hook went right past their faces, and I was like." Stop videoing me. Nice good vibes, kids. 